Hi, this is Dave Randolph from the Department of Computer Science at the University of Illinois at Chicago. My advisor, Barbara Diagenio, and I have been working with Justin Badgero from the Music Department at Elizabethtown College to rethink how computational models of musical fingering will likely be used by future performers and how this should be clearly reflected in the current evaluation of such models. In our paper, we operationalize expected reciprocal rank, a metric often used to evaluate recommender systems like web search, to evaluate piano fingering advice. We also argue it should generalize for other instruments. Instrumentalists, especially keyboardists and string players, are sometimes not sure what to do with their fingers. It can be enough to make them lose their carefully cultivated cool. Their plans for a thrilling performance rendered blurry by indecision, our intrepid musicians often seek fingering advice. They may talk to their teachers or fellow performers, but more often they will purchase an editorial score to help them navigate a difficult piece. If the stakes are high enough, they may buy several in hopes that the truth is out there somewhere. But in the end, the fingerings they use become their own. Okay, that was my attempt to inject some production value into my movie. Let's never speak of it again. The main point here is that a player may not find the advice of one expert to be enough. We have to admit to, that multiple ground truths exist in musical fingering. Like the old Pearl slogan, there's more than one way to do it. The quality of an automated system has to be judged by how well it presents alternative fingerings as some sort of ordered list or in some sort of ordered way. But this notion is largely ignored in the literature. Countless times every day we ask Google to show us a list of documents to answer some question we have or give us information about a topic we want to know more about. We suggest here that, that how a search engine behaves is pretty well analogous to how a useful fingering advice generator should behave. So how do you interrogate you know, each system. So for a, a web search, it's basically a list of keywords. For fingering, it's, it's, it's actually music. It's the full uh, symbolic representation of, of, of music. And maybe more deeply, it's, it's, it's a performance that's, that, uh, that somebody might have in mind. But, you know, that's how you would state and how you would interrogate the, the system is you, you feed it music. What you're looking for from a web search um, engine is relevant information. You've got a question, you know, give me the information that satisfies my information need. So relevance, and it's the same thing for fingerings. You want relevant advice, um, advice that's, that's going to help you get to a satisfactory solution. So what does one receive? What do you get from the system? Um, you know, for web search, you'll get an ordered list of, of, of documents or titles. And for fingering, it's, it's an ordered list of suggestions, and we actually suggest that it's, it's a, you would get in sort of independent suggestions at a phrase level, you know, that's what you're looking for. And what makes this thing, you know, what makes it hard uh, to, to do? So for web search, you've, you've, there can be ambiguity in the language that you feed the web search. So you can sometimes not get, you know, it's, it's hard to even form a query that, that will give you the result that you're looking for. Um, and with fingering, it's, it's, again, it's the same sort of thing. You know, you, you can't really capture all the aspects of the music that you're trying to express. Um, so how does the system really know what fingerings that you need to give? If, if all you're giving it is, you know, it's some abstraction um, of the music or, um, that you have in your head that you're, trying to, that you're trying to perform. And in all these cases, it's basically, you know, there's, there's one item in the list that should, in the output, that should satisfy that need. And the position in the list, like the ordering of that list matters a lot. If you bury the, you, you, you bury the lead, um, you're going to be pretty mad at Google, right? If you've got a good, you know, you want that ideally, you know, in the first position, you have the, the best possible response. Um, the most relevant information is first. And yeah, I guess here I'm just saying that it's a, it's a key benefit over those static paper scores is this list. You know, having like a, a variety of a, a diversity of advice and suggestions to consider um, is really, and, and getting that for free, uh, is, is really a, a key benefit for an electronic system over static paper scores. The most straightforward way to evaluate a list, uh, assuming that, you know, document or a recommendation is either relevant or it isn't, um, is uh, reciprocal rank. It's something called reciprocal rank, which is basically uh, very simple. You just take one and you divide it by the rank of the first relevant document that you see. So that'll give you a number between zero and one. And if the item is, you know, the 
a relevant document is first in the in the list, then you get a perfect score. Uh, you can't do any better than that. But we are looking for something a bit more nuanced here, where a range of relevance can be discerned. While there are other metrics that deal with graded relevance, we think expected reciprocal rank, ERR, is the most comprehensive. It discounts the credit a list gets for suggestion at a lower rank in exactly the same way as that binary reciprocal rank does. The best you can do is one over R, just like in the previous slide. But ERR also uses a probability estimate of how likely it is that the user will be satisfied and stop looking through the list. Importantly, it takes into consideration the probability that a user will already have stopped before reaching a given rank. This guards against the situation where, say, five mediocre answers can outscore an excellent answer, followed by four bad answers. The probabilities are calculated quite crudely. For web search, Chappelle and company create a correspondence with the document's graded relevance and just ensure we get a value between zero and one. We, on the other hand, calculate, again, this is for piano, we calculate an edit distance delta between what the human, H, determined was the correct fingering and the system's output at rank R. We make sure the distance ranges between zero, which is perfect, and one and simply subtract from one to ensure a number that looks like a probability. So obviously, the better the probability estimate um, that you use with ERR, the closer ERR is going to be to you know, the reality of the situation, the actual satisfaction um, that the, the user has um, with a given list. Um, so we spend quite a bit of time uh, in, in the paper uh, proposing um, you know, improved, what we hope are improved um, delta functions for piano. Um, and we basically, uh, the trigram edit distances seem to, to be significantly uh, better than the unigram edit distances. Um, the modified delta functions are motivated primarily by the observation that 2, 3, and 3, 4 finger mismatches are less significant than other finger mismatches. And that is, you know, they're less likely to lead a pianist to reject a suggested fingering sequence. The long fingers are well suited to strike any key, and long fingers that are next to each other are pretty obviously more interchangeable than, you know, other finger pairs. Our analysis is limited to melodic fingering with the right hand. It leverages data from two different sets of pianists who fingered fragments of different lengths from the same set of seven Cherney exercises. These are the same exercises used to evaluate the first computational model of piano fingering proposed by Parncut and Associates in 1999. One corpus contains the actual data from the Park, Parncut paper. The other corpus was collected by us as part of a larger survey of pianists in North America. It includes complete measures from the Cherney exercises. So you see the fragments are, have, you know, are longer. We constructed uh, random models that simply assigned random fingers to notes. Uh, these we expected to receive the worst scores. Similarly, we created uh, ideal models that simply return the top five finger fingering sequences as rated by human annotators. Then we ran our implementations of the Parncut model and the model from Jacobs, which has been accepted for many years, I think since 2000, um, as an enhancement of the Parncut model. Um, we expected the ordering to be ideal model, Jacob's model, Parncut model, and then the random model. And this is exactly what we, what we saw, not too surprisingly. Though we were unable to demonstrate a statistically significant difference between the Jacob's and Parncut models. Notably, the spread of the mean ERR values for the relaxed by trigram method is higher than what we see from the simplest unigram method. This suggests that trigram distance measures may be better able to differentiate competing models. Just a quick thank you to the people who sponsored this research and uh, thank you for your time and interest.